Hi guys, I'm Ashraf Azgar, and hopefully you guys saw me on a TV show six years ago called Educating Yorkshire. Awesome. <laughs> um, before I actually go into the presentation itself, I just wanted to actually say if there is anyone out here who is maybe planning on going into the TV industry, just please make sure you have a haircut first, okay? Because like, if you have a look at uh, how I used to look on the show, then it's, uh, it's not one of the best sort of looks. So yeah, so I'm Mushraf Asghar, and yeah, this was, uh, this was m myself on Educating Yorkshire, which is, uh, yeah, not, not really the best of looks. So where did it all begin for myself? So it all started actually before Educating Yorkshire itself. I say it st started at the age of maybe five or six where I suffered from an asthma attack which resulted in myself finding it very difficult for me to actually get my words out. And I'd say it was very hard because growing up, I felt out of place and I felt that no one really had an idea of how I actually felt. And maybe I think I was eight or nine and I remember actually going into the doctor's surgery and actually hearing him say that I'd never speak ever again. And hearing those words, it made me realize that it would be a lot harder than I actually thought. And unfortunately, having a stammer and being in a situation where you've been told that you can't really talk is probably one of the hardest things to actually hear. And I'd say, Heading into junior school and high school, I always felt out of place and I always felt that I wouldn't really fit in. And knowing that each and every person ar around me was able to speak fluent and I was in a situation where I had to think about every word or th try and construct a sentence which helped me to speak a lot more fluently. It, 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 I'd say it was one of the hardest things in life itself. And with having a speaking problem as well, I'd say I felt closed and I felt like I wasn't able to actually say what I wanted to actually say. And I was in a situation where each and every person made me feel like I wasn't able to actually achieve whatever I wanted in life. And it's really hard growing up and being in a situation where you're being told consistently that you can't achieve whatever you want because of something that you're, you're sort of suffering from. But I'd say the moment I met Mr. Burton, it changed. And it made me realize and understand how far I had come. It made me understand that all I needed was one person who had the faith in, who had faith in me and I was then able to actually achieve whatever I wanted in life. And Mr. Burton is, is that person who allowed me to understand that no matter what anyone said or thought of me or how I sounded, I knew that with the help of Mr. Burton, I would overcome my speaking problem and it also made me realize that teachers aren't just teachers. Teachers are people that help people such as myself realize the potential that they have. And it's up to you guys 
to actually help us realize how far we can really go in life. At that moment, after educating Yosha, I realized a change had happened. I knew that I was in a situation where everyone thought I was a fluent speaker um, because of educating Yorkshire. And unfortunately, that wasn't a case. And it made things very difficult for myself, but I kept l l listening to all the advice that Mr. Burton gave me. And he, he used to say, just take life as it is, just take it easy, and just keep moving forward. No matter how hard it gets in life, just keep pushing and you will overcome whatever you put your mind to. One thing I used to like do quite a lot after educating Yorkshire was, I used to ring a lot of contact centers up or call centers in this case. And, and the main reason why I used to call call centers up was, I'm not sure who it was, but someone told me that a contact center or a call center can't really turn a phone off on you. So I use this, I, I basically use this technique to help me overcome my speaking problem. So I just basically call O2 at the time and I would just basically say, I, um, I'm wanting to purchase an iPhone. And I was like maybe 16 at the time. I had no clue like what the hell was going on. But I just, I, I used call centers in a way of myself knowing that knowing that I'd overcome my speaking problem and these people basically had to wait, had to wait for me to actually get these words out. And I think educating Yorkshire also made me realize that with everything that I faced since I was a kid, I realized from educating Yorkshire that it was all in my hands and all I needed to actually do was believe in, in myself. And I say that's the main thing Mr. Burton would say all the time, that just believe in yourself and take it from there. And yeah, and uh, here's a, a weird sort of photo of everyone from Educating Yorkshire. <laughs> and yeah, so the, that's uh, Educating Yorkshire as well. And it also made me understand after Educating Yorkshire that having a speaking problem, it's not the worst of things in life. And I used to think it was. And I, I actually remember wearing those headphones and hearing myself for the first time and understanding that I had a voice within me and all I needed was that one person to help me really um, get that voice out. Um, after educating Yorkshire came the NTAs and at this point I think I was about 17 and I'd say at the age of 17 I had no clue what was actually happening in life with, with regards to this sort of TV fame and everything else that came um, with Educating Yorkshire and I was asked to actually be part of something called the NTAs where we won an award and one thing I got told was at the NTAs was try not to cover anyone's face and I, I, I said okay that's fine and one person I peed off was Ricky Gervais and a lot of people are wondering well why on earth have you got his name in the presentation? Uh, well I'll show you why. Uh, so I'm sure we all know who um, Ricky is and um, I actually did this to Ricky um, in front of like 20,000 people and if you look at the picture as well it's a lot worse if I'm honest that's myself <laughs> at the back uh, and it was um, 
he was really, really pissed off with that picture, if I'm honest. Uh, but I had no idea. And then I got told as well, uh, try not to cover anyone's face on the platform. So, uh, and um, if you have a look at, it, at the picture from this angle, it looks all right. Yeah, it seems like I've overcome something. I'm holding the award. I've got my finger in the air. I'm not sure why I've done that. But I just thought it'd be cool, and I thought I'd be cool by raising my finger. But then if you, if you have a look at the picture from a different angle, I covered Mr. Burton's face. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, he was quite peed off at that. And if you look, if you look carefully, um, he's, uh, like, I have no I, like, clue who th th like, th those two are at the back. But he was quite peed off um, at the picture that, like, well, with what happened. It also made me realize that after educating Yorkshire, even though Mr. Burton wasn't there anymore, and six years on, I still call him Mr. Burton. I, I'm not sure as to why I say that. Um, it still feels a bit awkward if I call him Matthew Burton. I've seen him get quite peed off at times as well when I call him Matthew Burton. So it also made me understand and realize that a teacher and student relationship isn't only just based on the results of, of a child. And I understand that it's really important, and I'm not here to say it's not, but I feel that even though after educating Yosha and with myself six years on in, in uni and motivational speaking, it's made me r realize that all the advice that I got from Mr. Burton, it wasn't as a teacher or a student sort of relationship. It was also a friend helping a friend. And six years on, I'm so fortunate to actually say Mr. Burton is a friend of mine. And it's kind of, it's, it's sort of weird actually thinking that as well, having your teacher as like one of your closest friends as well. But it's, it's nice seeing that it's not just about a child coming into school and five years on leaving school and, and, and that's pretty much it. It's about keeping those relationships and helping to build those relationships. And I'm so fortunate that six years on, I'm in a situation where I've got Mr. Burton who's there to help me and support me and, and give me that advice. And it's also made me realize that the help that I got from Mr. Burton has allowed me to be in a situation where I'm able to use something that I overcame in a means to help people and kids out there and teachers out there and all types of people out there to realize that you can and you will overcome an adversity with the right people that are there around you. So I'm really fortunate to actually be here and to actually speak in front of all of you. And it's just nice seeing that six years of hard work and all the hard work that I put in as a kid where at times, like I was saying earlier, that people told me that I couldn't do this or I couldn't do the uh, and now six years later, I'm in front of all of you amazing people that are heading into the teaching profession. And I can't really explain how fortunate I am for a teacher like Mr. Burton who helped me and pushed me. And I'm sure that you guys will have the same impact or even, and not even same. I feel that you guys will have much more of an impact on the students that you'll meet. And one thing I say about educating Yorkshire itself, as amazing as it is, hundreds of schools and thousands of schools out there, teachers are having the same impact. And this impact is having a ripple effect. And I say I was just really fortunate that educating Yorkshire w was a TV show. But at the end of the, the day, teachers are having this impact on students out there. And I know that for a fact that each and every one of you out here will have that impact on a student like myself. And obviously, at times it will be tough. At times, you'll start to question as to why you got into the teaching profession itself. But understand and realize that 
you are helping people to overcome adversities. Adversi uh, adversities that they are probably facing at home and the only sort of chance that they have to actually feel at peace or feel at home is in front of you. So I hope that this small talk that I've hopefully gave you guys makes you understand how fortunate I am and how fortunate that we are. And if there are any questions, maybe in, not here, it'll be a bit crazy, but if you have uh, any questions that you might have or if you, if you wanna get into contact with myself, then feel free to message me on social media. And once again, I just want to say a massive thank you to Teach First that's allowed me to come here for the second year to actually speak in front of all of you. So once again, f uh, thank you so much. Thank you.